that's the biggest fight of your career, probably. Probably, yeah. You know, I, I don't care about biggest fight. I haven't reached it yet because I haven't retired. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So no fight's going to be the biggest fight of my career. Every one of them is a big fight. So uh, they all got me here. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't really matter until I retire. Well, what do you think about uh, Catman? He seems he's at uh, least most dangerous when he's about to get put away. Uh, yeah, man, he's a, he's a good fighter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but everybody's beatable. You know what I'm saying? Even me. Uh, I just believe I, I'm going to believe in my heart and my soul that I'm going to get the win Friday, or Saturday, and that's pretty much all I can do. You know what I'm saying? Johnny, you the winner of this fight could have the next title shot. Uh, uh, have you heard anything about that? Do you think that's the way it's going to go? I hope. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope. But if it doesn't, guess what? It's not my control. You know what I'm saying? I can't control that. The only thing I can't control is a good win and then what I do after that. So that's all that matters. And, and what do you think about the main event? What's your take on who might take that fight? Man, it's tough. Carlos Conda, I think he's awesome on the feet. Uh, he's got a good closed guard. But let's be honest, how often does GSP stay in the closed guard? You know what I'm saying? And we know GSP is going to get him down sooner or later. If he does, how does he pass his guard and all those kind of things? And also, is his knee good enough that he can drive that hard off of it? We just don't know yet. And I can't wait to see it Saturday night just like everybody else. This uh, this division was put on hold for basically a year because of George's injury. With all the talk about George and Anderson, I mean, is it disappointing that you may not get the title shot because they're talking about this super fight if George wins? Yeah. You know, it, it, it does suck, but guess what? Like I said, I can't control that. You know what I mean? All I can control is my win. And then what I do after that, you know, if I have to, if I win, sit back and say, hey, let them fight, and I'll be the first one that congratulates you back at 170. You know what I mean? Uh, that's my mindset, is that if it's not in my control, there's nothing to worry about. All bad. So when, when you heard that, so what was it? Huh? Who's rather fight? Who's here for all the Who has the belt? Both. I don't care. I don't care. I just want that belt. You know what I mean? I don't care who it is, where they have it, what time. I just want a shot at that belt, you know? Uh, if GSB has it, awesome. If Carlos Condon has it, awesome. You know, I think they're both great fighters, and I just, I just want a shot at it. I want a chance to bring it home. You know what I'm saying? Johnny, I'll, I'll you said something about uh, Camp, and when you, when, once you got good, he didn't want to uh, train with you anymore. Can you explain what you meant by that? I meant that once I got to a certain level, none of the guys trained with me at Extreme Couture. I sort of got bumped to the back. You know what I mean? Uh, because of they thought that I was going to have to fight him one day. You know what I mean? And and I'm a wrestler at heart. So if me and you train every day and you want to say, hey, we're going to fight, guess what? We're going to fight. You know what I mean? That's just my nature. So it didn't bother me at all. And I understand why it bothered them. You know, uh, I wrestle with guys every day that I'd have to compete against every weekend. You know what I mean? Uh, and that didn't bother me at all. Uh, so same thing with fighting. It doesn't bother me. May the better man win that night, and whoever wins gets to buy the drinks. Getting beaten on by him for the early days of your career, how much does that help you now? Because, you know, you went through that, and you know what it's like, and now you, you know, now you know that uh, I got through it, no problem. I, it, it, man, that, that was a learning curve. I got beat on by everybody. I don't remember which one beat me worse, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so it's just a learning curve, you know. Uh, he got his good shots in, but then at the end, sort of toward the end, I started getting mine. You know, and that's what's, that's what's the most fun part about it, is that I started developing, and once I started getting a little taste of that development, that's whenever they were like, hey, we might really have to fight you one day. We gotta sort of start separating our tides. Are you in because a lot of people are wondering how this part of might play out in this fight. He's historically has pretty good takedowns and takedowns. Well, I taught him how to wrestle, you know? I showed him how to wrestle when I first got there. Uh, so it's, it's, it's decent. Now, is it great? No. You know, is it on Josh Koscheck's level? No. You know, uh, so those are the guys that I, I've, I've had to prepare for. John, John Fitch, is he on his level? No. So I'm not so much worried about his takedowns. Do I know they're going to be there? Yes. I think that he's going to try to take a shot to throw me off. So, yes, I am worried about him, but I'm not worried about him, is that, if that makes sense. <laughs> you are... When you worked with Martin, he was already well established in his career, but you weren't. How much of an advantage does that give you? Because he trained with you, but he didn't train with the Johnny Hendricks he's about to fight. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. Like, so to say that he knows how I train and how I'm going to fight and how I prepare, my camp sucked back then. You know what I mean? Compared to my camps now. And the fighter that I was back then, if I had to fight my, that guy three years ago, I would throttle him. You know what I mean? I'd have thrown him after the first year being in Texas. Uh, so, you know, 
that's just how much I have leaps and bounds I've improved. So I'm excited to see what I got out there in the octagon to see how much I have improved. You know what I mean? I get to gauge it. And how, how many people get to gauge it? You started off as a wrestler, but you have such heavy hands. Did you find that out pretty early when you were striking that you hit hard? Uh, no, no. Uh, I just knew that I was a wrestler, and people that were wrestler, people are wrestlers. I've seen fighting for a long time now. They tend to throw. They tend to try to keep it on the feet, right? So they don't want to get taken down. So I was like, hey, I got to get my hands to where I can threaten people. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I started knocking people out. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, hey, this is a lot more fun. The crowd likes it, yada, yada, yada. So I sort of put wrestling on the background, started focusing a lot on my hands. And this last camp, you know, that Josh Koscheck fight really told me that I need to work on my ground game. You know, or, or not even work on it, believe in it. And I started training with Marcelo Garcia. And I don't know if y'all know who he is, world-renowned jiu-jitsu. You know, one of the best in the world. And I started working with him. And we brought in some guys to help tweak my jiu-jitsu out a little bit. And now my jiu-jitsu, I feel more confident in my jiu-jitsu than my hands. If that's possible. And how much